Welcome to UF 200, Ethics and Diversity, with an emphasis on religion and the passions. I will be your instructor this semester, Justin Davis, and I hope that we have a good time together. The course is then going to be broken down into four sections. In the first, we're going to talk about what motivates you. We're going to try to figure out what questions really matter in life. Why do we like one thing or another? And kind of also address the idea of what are the passions and what is religion? We're going to address a question like, does the universe have a moral arc to it one way or the other? And if so, maybe where does that come from? Following this, we're going to look at different philosophies of life, some of which are identified as religions by you, some of which you might decide were religions, but maybe are not. The first set of these are atheistic systems of beliefs and practices. If there is a God, they're generally kind of ignored or kind of pushed to the side. We see this within Buddhist notions of Naroda, as well as Greek expressions found within Epicureanism, Stoicism, skepticism and cynicism. Following this, we'll move over to theistic systems, beginning with Jewish notions of halacha, the law and religious code, uh, and then moving on from there to different Christian expressions, including what we find today in Eastern Christianity, notions of hesychism, medieval Catholic asceticism, and a Protestant expression known as pietism. We'll also touch a little bit on the notion of antinomianism when we do the wrap up for that section. Finally, we're going to end up moving into addressing what ethics are, broadly speaking, looking and weighing and judging different ethical theories, oftentimes one over against another, and also having a bit of an application where we're going to be able to identify what the passions are in different people, uh, and also what systems of beliefs and practices you think would be most beneficial in them overcoming or mastering those passions. Generally speaking, your grades are based on all of this stuff, and we'll spend a little bit more time talking about it, but your syllabus is really the best place to address it. We are, because this is a virtual class, not able to see each other like we normally would. Oftentimes, you're going to have a kind of casual question that you might ask an instructor on the way out of class or beforehand when talking about something that's likely not going to be easily done in an online format. To try to make sure that we touch base and get this opportunity where a question might not seem like you want to write an email about it, but it's still something you'd like to know or get clarified that's a lot easier to address in a few minutes, we will have required office hours where not only are they available via Zoom anytime, but a specific time that I will address with every student uh, where you are needing to sit down and talk to me via Zoom, uh, and details of this will follow. Pay attention to announcements concerning this. The two real keys to success for you in this class is engagement and reflection. To try to help the engagement part, uh, I've created some online forums where there's not a prompt. It's just you and your fellow students and it's open-ended. This requires in some ways a lot more work out of you, although you're not having to feel like you're answering a sort of test question in front of everybody else. but you have to stop and look at the readings, pay attention to the lectures, or read what your fellow students are also saying and, and find ways of engaging with them. You'll find that by me not providing a prompt for these forums, you're able to engage in a different way that makes this your own sandbox. Every class will be different yours from another section that'll take this because the culture of what this class of your peers is like will look different because of what things you choose to highlight, what questions and prompts you choose to engage with one another on. Of course, you're all in any class expected a certain level of decorum. And remember that ideas are perfectly fine to talk about, but people insulting and all that stuff should be avoided and that we should probably avoid 
hyperbolic statements because saying everyone is like this or everything is like this or nothing is uh, really kind of shuts down dialogue. So try to keep some nuance involved with this, but again, this is your sandbox to play. I plan on monitoring them, looking them over, but generally not putting many, if any, comments on them because I want you to feel free to kind of construct your own nature of this discussion. Now, if I happen to see something that is uh, either not appropriate or just factually not the case because somebody's gone too far, uh, I might, you know, make a, a statement to that end to try to make sure that we're all kind of, you know, on the right path. But in other words, this is still your sandbox. It's, it's your opportunity as a class to engage one another. Now, there are also some keys of what all UF200 classes are expecting to talk about. In fact, they ask me to even tell you that it's an important goal of all university foundations and helping students to integrate their learning across what's otherwise a disjointed jumble of different assignments, courses, and semesters. And so we're wanting you to engage and reflect upon some very similar themes. So to help you draw this connection of what the university is wanting and kind of what your fellow peers in other sections of this class that are on different topics might be talking about, there's a reflection journal that's gonna help you draw some points uh, where we're going to understand notions of diversity and ethics in these re reflection assignments. We're gonna understand diversity in relation to different perspectives, cultures, and ideologies, diversity in relations to different systems that are created, oftentimes systems of inequality, notions of power and privilege, both individual and collective, uh, and notions of inclusivity as an ethical response to systems of inequity. I'm going to be highlighting one of these four different sections and kind of applying this into the discussion that's kind of otherwise might not be so clear. And I'm going to encourage you in this reflection assignment to reflect upon the readings, the lectures, and those discussions in the online forums and say, how would it work in this case? And sometimes there might even be an additional reading or video that is just for this reflection assignment to really help you understand it and move forward with it. You will also have other assignments throughout this course, notably papers. We're going to have two different introduction, easy section papers in section one, where I'm going to ask you to define things like religion and the passions and explain why you're going to do that. Then there's going to be a paper that's on section two, these atheistic systems of beliefs and practices uh, with a prompt that will be given to you shortly. It's in some ways like a test, but I want you to spend time stopping and reflecting over these issues and proofread as well. Although there's not going to be a lot of time open for either of these papers. Uh, section three will be a lot like the same assignment for section two, uh, but again, new different sets of beliefs and practices that we're going to talk about. And finally, at the end of the course, there's a reflection paper where I'm gonna ask you to stop and think about all of the other assignments that we've talked about and address throughout the entire semester and really just walk you through eight different prompts and come up with an answer on what you've learned and what you found beneficial and what you didn't. You're really, your major assignment is when you're going to start taking this and become the expert. Go out into the world and learn from others, but knowing maybe a little bit more about the topic, having heard about it and addressed it and, and you get to compare this. You're going to pick three different people to interview and ask about the passions. There's a couple of rules uh, about who you're allowed to ask. Uh, this is really showing your engagement in the community and you probably will know more about the term the passions and the people you're choosing to interview. But other than that, they'll probably have an idea of what it means and you ask them what they do with the passions and how they overcome them. I have a couple of caveats. I want them to be diverse and you can define who's diverse. It should be somewhat representative of your community as well and however you define your community and the diversity found in that community. Uh, 
Uh, also, only one person should be a family member. Beyond that, uh, the only other requirement is that somebody you see as a leader of this community, that be it religious or civil or, or some other way, somebody that held some sort of esteem for your community and what they do, uh, that their service in one way or the other is something that kind of sets them apart, where you see them as a leader of your community and you'll interview them as well as two other people. Uh, so this is kind of the makeup of all this and read through the syllabus for more information on this topic. You'll also be applying our discussion of the passions to a fictional work by John Steinbeck called Tortilla Flat. I'm particularly fond of this work and Steinbeck's writing in general as he kind of wrote about what he saw and what he experienced. It's also fiction. And so while his very engaging fiction is something that is going to be easy for you to read and follow along, the passions are very obvious in this work of Steinbeck. Uh, and you're going to be applying kind of different techniques that you think would be helpful to the main character, Danny, and his friends uh, throughout this work. Uh, and Steinbeck, again, is a very easy author to read, and it's very short, simple uh, statements uh, that you're going to be able to draw out uh, and engage with your fellow students on, and you will lead discussions uh, virtually through discussion boards and, and YouTube presentations that you're going to make yourself on Steinbeck's work, Tortilla Flat, and what you see the passions in here. It's not a book report, uh, but it's more engagement with fictitious people who are lively enough that you understand what they're going through, but you're not having to feel like you're going to hurt somebody's feeling by saying, I think this person's not a very good person, or this person's weak, or too strong, or too brazen, or this person's fantastic, but you're not going to feel like you need to lionize them either. right? You have all of the nuance that exists in real life, but it's, again, fictitious enough that gives you that notion of separation. So you'll need this book as well. And we'll get to that at the last third in this application period of our class. The only book you need to purchase is Tortilla Flat, which you can find all over the place, uh, as it is a classic work of the 20th century. Uh, but other than that, the only thing you need is the reader, which I've already provided. It's a single document that kind of walks you through every week's readings, number by number, week by week. And so you're not feeling lost or confused or needing to buy an expensive text to go along with this class. And this will be found through Canvas. If you have any other questions about the assignments or the readings, feel free to let me know and I will talk at you then. I want to encourage you, if you have questions, the most obvious place to get to any of them is by checking the syllabus, looking it over. There's going to be assignments that I didn't mention in this quick walkthrough that you'll see pop up uh, in the syllabus or in Canvas, and you might have a question about it. And again, feel free to reach out to me about those, but these are the major assignments, and this is broadly speaking what you need to know. You'll need to walk yourself through all of the assignments in Canvas and watch the videos, click on things, but the syllabus will really give you the details about what these assignments are in a way that the cursory video presentation is really not designed to do. So again, I encourage you to always look at the syllabus, look at the dates for all of the assignments. Uh, they're there in the schedule in the back of the syllabus. It'll tell you what they are. If you're not sure about what something is, again, send me an email, ask questions about it. Uh, but otherwise, the syllabus is a fairly large and simple document that'll walk you through almost everything you need to know.